You know, I could use a little help with that. Hmm. You asking me to come? Is that you offering? Rollins is back at the SVU and we couldn't be happier. Kelly Giddish made her guest appearance return to Law & Order SVU this week, and it was so good to see Amanda Rollins back with the squad, even going undercover with Carisi. He's a keeper, huh? <laughs> I'm just saying, I feel like we could be setting up a more permanent Rollins return. Let me show you what I mean when we dig into Law & Order SVU Season 25, Episode 11. I'm Anna Rumor, and this is Pop Culture Social Call. Rollins and Carisi are the stars of this whole episode. We kick off with them discussing a rather large development in their life, which is that Rollins quit her teaching job at Fordham University. I was bored being a professor. She's feeling a little directionless in life, so what better way to remind her of her life calling than to get her involved with an SVU case? At least you're not short-staffed anymore. Oh, you trying to say something? <laughs> It's a runaway bride named Jenna who kicks off this case, as Benson and Rollins learn that the reason she left her groom at the altar was because she'd been assaulted the night before while she and her fiancé slept separately, as per tradition. After he was finished, he said, you're going to remember me. The assailant removed all the bedding and the clothing from the room to get rid of DNA, which clues Curry into a possible connection with a similar case six months prior, another bride. Enter the former professor known as Rollins. Prima nocta. Uh, Dwa de Seigneur. English professor? It's it's a medieval rite. The, the lord of the castle can sleep with any woman under his rule on the night of her wedding. Except the guy we're looking for doesn't exactly sound like a prince. Now meeting with the second survivor, Darcy, Rollins and Benson hear almost the exact same story as Jenna's, so they know they've got a serial attacker out there. With DNA being so slim in this case, the two kind of come to a dead end until they meet with a third victim, a woman named Brina, who didn't make a police report because she conceived a child from the attack. My husband doesn't know. Now, Brina doesn't want her husband to know anything about her assault, but she did tell the detective she thought she saw her assailant when she and her husband visited a flower wholesaler before the wedding, which means it's time to go undercover. Not me. Phoebe's not gonna be too thrilled about me getting pretend married. Well, there are two other people in the room that wouldn't have to pretend. And there is no better time than to make Rollins and Carisi go undercover as an engaged couple and their naturals. Who would have thunk? What is my budget, honey? For you? Yeah. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Oh, okay. Then I'll go take a look around. <laughs> they bait the suspect into making another attack that night while Rollins gets this guy's DNA. And with that, plus some of Carisi's classic questioning, they get their confession. I guess I just got tired from waiting for my own best day. Case closed. But what about Rollins? So are you saying you don't want me back? Amanda, <laughs> even if I did, I don't have a desk for you. Yeah, I noticed that. It's just my luck. I'm finally available and you're not understaffed anymore. This is not about you fitting into the squad room. This is about where you belong in your life. And I don't want SVU to be your safety net. I don't know. I feel like we were testing out a possible return in this week's episode. And I, for one, am on board. I don't know though, am I being delusional? Do you want Rollins back? Let me know in the comments, like and subscribe while you're there, then head over to popculture.com for the latest entertainment news. Until next time, I'm Anna Rumor, and this is Pop Culture Social Call.